So now, now let's say if random number okay is equal to one, all right, it's equal to one this way. Now I'm using double equals to compare. Okay, I'm using double equals and saying is what on the right equal to what's on the left. Okay, I'm, I'm asking a question, but if I just use only one equal sign, I'm assigning. I'm saying now this is going to read if you are able to assign one to random number, it's always going to be true. If random number is an integer, it's always going to be true. This is now going to ask if you're able to assign one to random number, then do what's in the if statement. You don't really want that. You want to ask to see if what's on the right one is equal to, or, be, or basically one is equal to what's stored in random number. Or basically if random number, what's stored in random number is equal to one. Okay, so make sure it's in double equals, otherwise it's going to assign. So if random number is equal to one, then then that means then let's as let's you know because we, we we use one to represent heads and we use zero to represent tails. So if random number is equal to one, then let's set the side up field, okay, to the string. We know it's a string to the string heads, okay. So now let's say then side up is going to be equal to the string heads, right? Now we can go ahead and explicitly state that else if the random number is equal to two, then then set it to tails. But think about it. If it's not one, the random number. If it's not one, then it's zero, right? If it's not one, then it's zero. So we can just have an else statement like this because it's either going to one or zero. If it's not one, then it's zero. So if it's not one, then go ahead and set side up to tails, okay? Else then set side up, or we can go ahead and also ex explicitly state uh, with an else if statement saying that else if random number is equal to two like this. But we don't have to. You can do this too. But you don't have to. If you want to be specific, you can do that. But we, then, we, then we can use an else, else statement because if it's not one, then it's then it's then it's then it's zero. Then it's zero. I, I don't know if I said if it's not one, then it's two. But if it's not one, then it's zero. Since we are starting with zero, well, let, let's start with that. If the random number is equal to zero, right? If it's zero, then then it, we are, we are dealing with with um, tails. So let's start with that. Tails as in tails. Side up is equal to tails. Else, then a side up. If it's not zero, then it's going to be one, right? So else, if it's one, then side up is equal to Heads. Let's do it that way. Yeah, so it's going to generate a random number, either zero or one. And if it's zero, then it's tails. If it's one, then it's heads. And so I think we've done what the void method is supposed to do. It randomly de determines the side of the coin that is facing up heads or tails and sets the side up field accordingly. Okay, so we've done just that. It sets the side up field accordingly. Now let's come back to the constructor. Okay, it said a no argument constructor that randomly determines the side of the coin that is facing up, heads or tails, and, and initializes the side of foot accordingly. That's what the void method is also doing. That's what this void void method is doing. So so in the constructor, it's also doing the same thing. When it, when this object is called, right? When this object is called, it's going to do the same thing as the void method is doing. So let's go ahead and call the void method in here like that. So anytime a constructor is this constructor, someone tries to create an object from this class. Or code outside of this class is trying to create an object from this class. It calls the void method, and that's exactly what this is doing. Okay. All right. So now let's work on the third method, which is a method named get side up that returns the value of the side up field. Now this is going to be an accessor or a getter, right? It's just returning the value of a field in this class. This is my constructor. Like I said, I have to. I li like to have my constructors as a, as a last thing in the class. I have a field here, I have a, a method here, and I'm going to create another method which is going to be called get side up. That is going to return the value of the side up field. So it's also going to be an instance method because guess what? It's it's working directly with the side up variable. It's returning the value of it. And because of that, it's an instance method, right? And with instance method, remember I said you don't add the keyword static. You don't you don't add the keyword static. So it's going to be just like this one. Um, so public, okay, because I want it to be public. Um, so I want code outside of this class to be able to use this public method to either get the values of this, this this field or to be able to change the value of this field. I don't want them to be able to directly change the value or set the value of this field. You know, you know, you know and that's why I've made it private, right? I don't want them to just say, um, <clears throat> um, I don't. I don't want them to just say that um, side up is equal to two, or side up, side up is equal to three, or or system or system that out of print side up, right? I want them to be able to use these methods to be able to change the contents of this field, or get the contents from this field. So now let's get to this method, get side up, right? So a method named get side up. It's going to return the value of the side up field. So public. Now I need to specify that 
the return type of this get setup, right? Now, when you think about it, get setup is going to just return the value of this get setup field, okay? And this get setup, uh, sorry, and this sorry, <laughs> it's going to get return the value of this setup field, right? And this setup field is a string. So if it's going to return the setup field as a string, then I, I need to set a return type also to a string. And then now I need to give it a thing, give it a name. Again, no static uh, keyword here. So let's give it a name of get setup, right? So I'm just going to copy it and paste it here. And then now let's see if it, it's going to accept any arguments. No, because it's only returning the value of the setup field. That's all it's doing. So we, we don't have to define any parameters. So all I'm going to do here is just say, when this method is called, then return setup field. So this is the only way that code outside of this class can can um, can can get can see the value of the setup field. I don't want them to be able to see it directly by saying, just just doing it out of print setup. I want them to be able to say, okay, uh, I, I want them to call this method first to be able to access this private field. Okay, I'm kind of hiding the data. All right, so anytime it's called return setup, and then I write down the methods. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on. It says write a, a program that demonstrates the coin class, right? So now we are done with the class itself. So let's go ahead and save it. Save it this this class and then work on the program, right? So I'm going to compile this, see if we have any errors. In chapter six, I'm going to create a new folder and call this what's the name of this program? Coin toss simulator. Let's call this coin toss simulator. And then save this also as coin toss simulator dot. Um yeah, it's fine. Coin toss simulator. Well, well, I named this as I named the, the class as coin. The name of the file has to be the same as the name of the um, program, right? So it's just to the name of the file. Your file has to be the same as the name of your class. Okay, so I'm just naming it the same way. Otherwise, I have an error. So I'm going to save this as coin here, and then let's see. We have a we have a couple of errors. So let's see. Illegal start of expression. Let's see what what's happening here. Oh, oh my goodness <laughs> oh my goodness I was looking this is this is a bad mistake it is a this is a terrible mistake here and I don't know why I did that and this is actually a bad mistake all right so the the method is called called toss so I, I, and I, I I can't believe I didn't see it you know maybe I was rushing through it this is not supposed to be void this is supposed to be toss right <laughs> I don't know I was just looking at this and then I guess I guess I saw this and I just wrote it down because this method is called, called toss, this method is what's actually f uh, figuring out if the me the coin is, um, after the coin has been tossed, if it's heads or tails, right? If the setup is heads or tails. So when the constructor is also called, we can see here, it should, it's going to do uh, go ahead and do the same thing. It's going to determine the side of the coin you know, that's facing up and uh, basically set the setup field. So when it's when the constructor is used to create an object from this class, it's, it's going to do the same thing as a toss, right? So what, what we want to do is call the toss method and not void. This is this is bad, All right? So, so uh, yeah, if you saw it, then that's great. If you did, if you didn't see it, then I hope you understand now, right? We are we are calling the toss method to basically do the same thing as as a toss method method does, because you know that's what the description says. So I meant I meant to call the toss method and not void. And I don't know why I did it, and I I don't know why I didn't even see. It. That's even the worst part. But I, but it's, I'm glad I saw it now. So, I mean, the program we wouldn't have run anyway. Anyway. So compile this, and then now we, we have no problem. Okay, and well, that was funny too. All right, so now we have our class. Now let's work on the program. So write a program that demonstrates a coin class. All right, so we're going to write a different program that's going to generate um, or use a coin class. So let me just go ahead and copy this question first of all. Create a new file, paste it here, and then let's go ahead and create a program that's going to test this class. I'm saving it, oh, I'm saving the program in the, in the same folder as um, the coin class so that they can easily see each other, right? I don't have to specify a path of the class to, uh, I don't, you know, uh, to, I don't have to specify the path of the class uh, to, to, this pro, uh, to this program if I save the class some, uh, somewhere else. Because I saved it in the same folder, it's easier for it to find it. So let's define, you'll go ahead and create a class for this main program, right? So public class, let's call this coin test. It's testing the coin class. Let's go ahead and create some main, main method, which is public static void main.
Okay. All right, so now let's um, move on. Your program should create an instance of the class and display the side, you know, and display the side that is initially phasing up, right? So let's do that. Let's work on create, um, creating an instance of the coin class. So to do that, I'm going to use the name of the, cl the class and then give the class type variable a name. I'm going to I'm going to call this um, nickel, or I'm just going to say um, a dime. Okay, a dime. Or I just say a penny. Penny. All right, pennies. Okay. Now, when you try to do this, you try to do this. It's similar to trying to define a, a variable. Of type integer, calling it number, right? This is the type, and this is the name of the variable. You can think of this as a type. You can think of this as a name of a variable, right? But when you try to define a variable this way, var Java is going to realize that this coin is not one of the primitive data types. It's going to know that it's it's not an integer. It's it's not a double. It's not um, a character. It's going to know that. So it's going to try to look in that same folder, or basically look in this code to see if there's any path that, that you've specified for it. Look in that path or look in that same folder and see if this coin class is available. And when it sees the coin class, it's going to say, okay, uh, you're trying to create a variable that's going to reference or that's going to hold the, the location of a coin object. So it's going to re reserve this variable for you that way, right? So. Now that this variable is, is being reserved to hold a, a, a coin object, I'm going to go ahead and create a new coin object in memory, right? And I'm going to, this equal sign is going to return the memory address of that coin object to Penny. So now Penny is going to reference that coin object. Penny is going to refer to that coin object, right? Now in the constructor, we define it in such a way that um, it doesn't accept in any argument, right? Anytime it's called, it's just going to set the setup field to either tails or heads okay so we don't have to specify any arguments in the coin constructor over here All right so now we've created we created an instance of the coin class let's see what we have to do next and display the side that is initially phasing up All right so let, let's go ahead and display the side that that's initially phasing up so now we've created a coin object a value has been set for the side up either heads or tails we don't know but, we, but to, in order to see it, we can call the get side up method, which is going to return the side up for us. So we can say penny dot get side up. Right now, when we penny dot get side up, it's only returning the side up value. It's not printing it out. So we have to print out what is returned from this. So I'm just going to use a system dot out dot print ln statement. Okay, so I'm using a system dot out print element statement, and that's going to go ahead and print out what is returned from this method call. Okay, or from this yeah from this method call, and then we can see it. So we can even say add a string to it and say that because it says in, uh, display the initial the side that is initially facing up. So I'm going to say side initially facing up, side initially facing up, and I'm going to go ahead and concatenate it with whatever is returned from this get side up variable. So let's go ahead and compile this and see if first of all that's working. I'm going to compile this. I'm going to save it in the same folder as the coin class. And then let's see if we have any issues. Okay, so it's compiled com completely. Now, uh, yeah. So now let's run this and see what happens. You can see it says side initially facing up tails. Let's put a colon here. And then you can see it well. Compile it again and then run. So tails and run again heads okay we can see it's changing over here we can see it's changing heads or tails so run tails heads all right so it's working now let's move on let's take this down okay so then then use a loop to, to toss the coin 20 times use a loop to toss the coin 20 times all right so now let's go ahead and do that we are going to use a loop to call to <laughs> to toss the coin 20 times. So let's go ahead and create a loop first of all. That's going to um, that's going to toss the uh, coin, or, or basically let, let's create a loop that's going to iterate 20, 20 times first, right? So I'm going to, go, going to go ahead and use a for loop here to do that. So a for loop here to do that. And I'm going to start the target variable from one. So I'm going to say 
current iteration, or let's just say current iteration. Either we, we, yeah, I don't know if, I, well, first of all, we have to declare the type, right? So let, I'm thinking of the name, name to give this, let's see. Oh, current toss, we, we, that, that's, a good, that's a good name for it. All right, so current toss is, is going to be an integer, right? Because it's going to be, it's just, it's just going to refer to the current toss, either one, either, either, either this is the first toss, the second toss, the fifth toss, you know, so we have to, you know, define the type as an integer, right? Because it's either going to be one, two, five, eight, nine, or, you know, 20. Basically in that range, one to 20. So I'm going to define an int variable. I'm going to call it current toss and initialize it to one. So for current toss is equal to one, as long as the current toss variable is less than or equal to 20, do what's in the loop. And when you're done, before you come back up and check to see if current toss is less than or equal to 20, add one to current toss. All right. So what's going to happen here is we are creating a loop. Okay. We are saying, you're saying current toss is going to start at one. Okay. Before the loop does anything, it's going to check to see if one is less than or equal to 20. Yes, one is less than or equal to 20. So it's going to go ahead and run the code that's in the loop, right? And before it comes up to check again if current toss is less than or equal to 20, it's going to add one to current toss. So current toss becomes two. And then it checks, is two less than or equal to 20, right? This has already been initialized, so it just, it just happens once. But it checks it over here, it says it's two less than or equal to 20. Yes, right? So it's going to do what's in the for loop, okay? And then before it comes back up and check to see if current toss is less than or equal to 20, it's going to add one to it, right? So now current toss becomes three and it's going to check to see if three is less than or equal to 20, do what's in the loop. Four is less than or equal to 20, do what's in the loop. So basically this loop is iterating from one to 20, iterating 20 times. As long as it hits 20, while well, well 20 is going to be less than or equal to 20, right? So it's going to do what's in the loop, add one to current toss, which is going to be 21. It's going to check. Is 21 less than or equal to 20? No. So if that's false, then this loop exits, right? So meaning we've got, we've created a loop that's going to iterate 20 times from one to 20. And this current toss variable is going to keep track of that, our current toss. At any, at any time we can print the value of current toss and we will know, we'll know the current, we'll know, you know, basically what toss we are on. Okay, we can print out the value of current toss and we know what toss we are on. All right.